In this example, we have kind of a true false type of a statement. The question asks, consider the reaction below and determine which statements are true. So this is a very open-ended question. We have to kind of figure out what mechanism is happening for our substitution or elimination reaction. And we also have to think about the product in order to answer the different statements that we have to look at. So um, first off, you wanna look at what type of reagent you have. Next, you wanna take a look at your substrate. And those are typically like the two key things to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and solve this question. First, we have sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a small, strong nucleophile slash base. So right away, I can narrow my choices down to E2 and SN2 for this reaction because we have a small, strong nucleophile slash base. The next thing to look at is the substrate. The substrate has two R groups coming off of it. There's our alpha carbon attached to the bromine. So this is a secondary substrate. Anytime you have steric hindrance, um, like a secondary substrate, for example, that's going to tell me right away that we have an E2 reaction. So that helps me kind of narrow my mechanism down a whole lot, just by looking at that reagent and that substrate. So we know we're gonna have an E2 product. We know that means it's gonna be an alkene. Does that mean that the E2 product is the only product? No, technically we could still see some SN2 as a minor product as well. Um, in theory, there could be multiple um, E2 products, but let's take a look at our substrate to kind of really flesh that out. So one of the key requirements of the E2 reaction is that you have an antiperiplanar arrangement of the um, leaving group and the beta hydrogen. So let's take a look at our beta positions and what type of hydrogens we have located there. Um, on the right-hand side, we have two hydrogens, a wedged hydrogen and a dashed hydrogen. And on the left-hand side, we have only one hydrogen atom. This is a methyl group right here. So in order to have an antiperiplanar relationship, we're gonna need the bromine to kind of be on one side of the ring and the hydrogen on the other. So right away, I can kind of narrow my choices down a little bit here by crossing off the hydrogen on the left-hand side of this molecule. That hydrogen can never be antiperiplanar to the leaving group, so we can't eliminate it. The only hydrogen that we can eliminate is this one, the wedged hydrogen um, on the right-hand side, because that's the only one that's going to have the antiperiplanar relationship of beta hydrogen and leaving group so that we can form our alkene product. So let's take a look at what our only possible um, alkene product is. The wedged methyl is left alone. It stays as it is on the um, left-hand side. And then our alkene is going to form between the alpha and the beta bond right here to give us a di-substituted alkene. And this is the only E2 product that we can form. Again, because the hydrogen on the other side that would make, say, the Zaitsev product isn't in the antiperiplanar relationship that we need. We can also make, like I mentioned, an SN2 product as the minor product. So let's kind of draw out what that would look like. This would be our SN2 product, but again, this is going to be very minor, whereas this one will be the major product. Okay, also notice in the SN2 minor product, the hydroxyl group is now wedged. Again, that's because it has to come in from the opposite face of the leaving group. So let's take a look at our statements and kind of determine which one's true and which ones are false. So the first statement says the predominant mechanism for this reaction is, is, is E2. That one is true. Second, the reaction is regioselective. So regioselective means you make multiple regio products. Okay? And that's not the case here. Regiochemistry is referring to the alkene products and we only make one. So this would be a regio specific E2 reaction. Okay, so this statement is false. Statement three, this reaction produces a di-substituted alkene as the major product. That one we found out was also true. So one and three are true statements. We check back at the question, consider the reaction below and determine which statements are true. So always double check that. So one and three are true statements. And so our answer is gonna be D. Okay, so let's take a look at 